My name is Danielle Scott and I'm the curator of the Empowering at 150 Bay, uh, the new gallery um, that is associated with pro arts. The one artist that you're seeing right now, not artist photographer, is Donna Bassin. And Donna Bassin created a series called I Am My Own Witness. She invited women and men of uh, different colors, uh, different race, uh, LGBT into her studio space to share what they feel about living in America. The Empowering was born to help us feel more connected to each other, more hopeful and more human. I wanted the viewer to feel our history and all our history, all of it in every shade, our pain, our darkness, and our light. The exhibition depicts the depths of the artist's heart, mind, soul, and spirit. Most times people think that art is pretty. Art is not always about pretty things. It's about who we are, what happened to us, and how our lives were affected. My vision and selection process came from Nina Simone's which I live by as an artist. An artist's duty, as far as I'm concerned, is to reflect the times. And that is, to me, the definition of an artist, to reflect all of the times, all of, all of the time. The empowering is giving voices to those who have been silenced for far too long. So you, if you come to see the empowering, you will see many stories of different artists and it's depicted through their work. Their work speaks for itself. The artists really don't have to say anything. You just can just look at the work and you'll see the story of that artist and what they're trying to say. That's the empowerment. People have used fingerprinting for mark making since the earliest recorded days of civilization. Yet fingerprints today are far more likely to be used for mark making other than for stamping a claim of ownership or of creation. They are most widely employed by the police and forensic labs, banks, institutions, and government health services. Of course, interpreting these prints is an art in itself. And for all their apparent individual information, fingerprints tell us nothing about gender, age, race, income, or anything else about a person that can be used for enforcing social constructs that define categories of oppression. This piece is by Valerie Hum and is called the Fingerprint Bureau. So this piece is by Ben Jones and the eve of the show is the day that Trayvon Martin, Trayvon Martin celebrated his birthday. So February 5th is the day that Trayvon Martin would have celebrated his birthday. And we installed the piece on, the show opened on February 6th. So it was nice to actually have this piece in the empowering, showing, um, you know, our, just giving a dedication and a memory of this young man who was brutally killed by the hands of just, just you know, someone who didn't care for his life at all. Artist Diane English um, piece is called License and Registration, and it's a depiction of when people of color are pulled over and they're asked to present their paperwork. And in her statement, she, she said, you know, every time we have a cop car behind us, we're very fearful that we're going to be pulled over and kind of making sure that we have these things um, available. Like they're not where we have to go and reach and we have to pick them up and take them out. They should be available. So if you look at the piece, deep into the piece, there's these hands that are printed on there. Um, and you, it looks like there's so many things you can read from this. It could be us putting our hands up. It could be us having our being on the floor with our hands down. Us with our hands this way. Or blood from us being killed. This piece is by Crespo. Um, and I had first saw the piece um, just on Instagram. And I know this, I don't know this actual artist, um, but from just being on her page, I saw that she was a mother. She's a mother of three, she's a teacher, she's a stay-at-home mom. Uh, 
um, and she's also a painter. So just kind of like juggling those different jobs as a woman and then her creating this beautiful reflection of what a woman looks like is just amazing to me. So um, just her having like this woman in this gold being very royal and then all of the different textures that are within. This one spot right here just makes me think of our heart, our heartbeat, our mind. Um, the breasts on the woman are not perfect. They, you know, they don't, they lack gravity, but you also think of when you're feeding your children and that just this one person, a one woman takes care of a whole, you know, a whole household. People rely on her and her little three, her three children rely on her. Nana's Colonial Scrapbook is by Dr. Antonak Ellis Williams. The mixed media collage was created during the pandemic as a way to reclaim history and memories of our grandmothers. It, was intention it intentionally takes us from 1619 through 7 1974 after Roe vs. Wade to examine their intersectionality of race and gender. Grandmothers pass on her scrap scrapbook from us to add our stories. This scrapbook is an important reminder of how we made it through the dark times and ought to give us strength during current social injustices and the pandemic. Goddesses. The oldest recorded bones found were 46,000 years old from Morocco, Africa, and they were female. A story doesn't start from slavery. She is the true mother of the earth. Everything starts from her. She is the queen of all queens. Her strength, her will, her determination, her resilience, and her beauty is unmatched. The weight that she had to endure and still is enduring today in America shows how amazing she truly is. Goddesses was created to celebrate Black women. Um, the selection process for the empowering was pretty difficult, very challenging because over a hundred artists submitted for the empowering. And when I was doing the process, I actually read through all the bios, I read through all the artist statements, and I needed to get to know the artists um, instead of just looking at their work. But the work was selected by the stories that were behind the work, the power behind the work. So if you've come and you've visited uh, the show, you can see why the work was actually selected from pieces about the Women's March, the LGBT rights, immigration, fingerprints, Trayvon Martin, um, the uprising, um, uh, brown and black people being arrested. There's so many different things. Femininity is in there, a lot of feminine work. Um, there, there's just so much to show in the show. The collection of artists is just a brilliant, it's a brilliant show of creatives that came together. They didn't even know, they don't know each other, but their work kind of just tells a story. So each piece fits the narrative of the empowering. So when you walk through, you kind of can read it and see what stories are being told. COVID is being told. Um, the story of, you know, someone losing someone during COVID and it being photographed. Um, the statement that the mayor was making in Newark is being photographed. So there's so much going on in this exhibition of the empowerment. So that's how it was selected. It's the story that helped to build the narrative of the exhibition. The empowering is dedicated to Gladys Parker Grammer and Alita Palwa. I know that I could not, I couldn't have curated the show without her guidance and me hearing her in the back of my head saying, please continue, please do it. Um, put everything, that, put your all into what you're doing with this show. Um, Alita Caldwell happens to be the person who, she was the principal of Arts High School who introduced me to Gladys Parker Grauer. And she used to call me Danny. And she said, you are my child. I didn't give birth to you, but you're going to become the legacy of my, me, Miss Grauer, Lisa Washington, and Ben Jones. Ben Jones happens to be featured in the show and Bisha, Bisa Wendy Washington as well. So the show is dedicated to Alita Caldwell and Gladys Parker.